what do you see when a man comes in who has been taking exogenous testosterone? Let's just say, for example, a, uh, a dude in their 20s, and this is rife today. There's, you know, with social media, kids in their 20s are just blowing up bigger sure. and bigger, yeah. you know, in the, in the bodybuilding scene. And so yeah. there's so much use of exogenous testosterone. Mm-hmm. You mentioned there's a relationship between testosterone and sperm health. What happens to that feedback loop and to sperm if you are injecting testosterone? Mm-hmm. This is the pain of my existence for the last year. It, it's not the actual testosterone. I have a lot of patients on the actual testosterone. It's the lack of education by the provider or the online clinic on the effect of exogenous or external testosterone on sperm production and fertility. Because again, it's unfortunately the trend is sell more testosterone. People are feeling great. It's like they're it's, it's like if if you need it, it's it's a great way to feel back normal or like to have raised laser focus or like you feel energetic and you can conquer the world, right? But then there is some side effect of taking testosterone and people and patients should know about the side effect because they need to make an informed decision on if they want to take it, when they want to take it, do they need to do any steps before taking it. And this is the main problem that I'm seeing every single day in my clinic. Patient would come to me, they would say, hey doc, we're trying to conceive, we did the semen analysis, we have no sperm. We've been on testosterone for the last five years. No one told us this is going to affect fertility. So the, the pathophysiology of it is if you take testosterone, we call it exogenous testosterone or external testosterone, your body is going to perceive it as, whoa, I have a lot of circulating testosterone in my blood. Why would I spend energy and produce my own natural testosterone from the testicle? So that's happening at the level of the hypothalamus? Of the testicle. So the okay. testicle would feel, and, and the brain would feel like, there, I have a plenty of testosterone. I should not produce my own natural testicular testosterone. So this will shut down. With the shutting down of testosterone production, you're going to also shut down the sperm production. But also the natural testosterone is the only fuel for sperm production. So it's if you take, no matter how much you take testosterone, this is going to be negatively affecting also, oh, exogenous testosterone doesn't act as fuel for no, sperm production. No, it acts the opposite. Interesting. It, it, it doesn't affect whatsoever. On the, it, it makes it worse. So most men on exogenous testosterone, again, they're going to drop their natural testosterone and they're going to drop their sperm to zero. Like if you take it for an extended period of time, five years, seven years, the likelihood that if you do a semen analysis, these numbers are going to be extremely low or zero. So if there's not a feedback loop from the testes saying, hey, there's no sperm here, produce sperm. No. The body's just detecting testosterone. Correct. You, you're ramping it up with exogenous. 100%. So the brain basically says, okay. we don't need to send that signal to We don't to need to the send testes. the signal to produce sperm. So there's no sperm production. There's no natural testosterone Correct. production. And then essentially... The testicles just shut down. Exactly. So this is why, again, most couple on on TRT, they're they're gonna have a shrinkage in their testicle. Like the, the testicle are not functioning anymore. They're not producing sperm. They're not producing testosterone. So the volume of the testicle in most patient on TRT are gonna shrink to what, almost nothing. What does that look like? Like what's the normal size of a, a testicle if versus a around four point five centimeter in longitudinal it, axis? That's normal. That's normal. And then you're going to have a major shrinkage of, of the testicle. The problem is around 15 to 20% of men, these changes are irreversible. And this is the problem. Like 85% or 80% of men, if you stop testosterone, you might reverse this process and the, 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 the testicle would wake up, they start producing their natural testosterone and sperm, Maybe not to your to their baseline, but mm. you're going to have at least something to work with. Enough to conceive. Correct. But presumably that has a lot to do with how long they've been doing it? Correct. It's the, the dosage and the duration of treatment. So these 15 to 20% of men have irreversible damage and they cannot conceive naturally because the testicle has been shut down for an extended period of time and it's not waking up. We have ways to deal with it, but it's, it's, it's a long and, and painful process. Like it's, you have to give them a lot of medication like ACG and clomiphene citrate to try to tell the testicle, wake up. Now we need you to work again. 
uh, sometimes we're successful, sometimes we're not successful. So this is why having a, a very honest conversation with whoever is, is prescribing testosterone is very, very important. The first question for a patient in my clinic is, do you want to conceive in the future? If the answer is yes, then I have to sit and explain the exact same thing that we just said and give them the option to either delay their TRT or to freeze some sperm before starting TRT, which is one of the best idea, right? So I tell them there is almost a 100% chance that these semen parameters are going to get affected. They're going to go to very, very low numbers. Freeze the sample before you go on TRT. This way you have an insurance policy. Whatever happens, you have something to use in the future. This something cannot be used for natural conception. It's going to be used for IVF or IUI, but at least you have something, right? Or we give the patient the option to take something like clomid or ACG with the TRT, with the testosterone, to keep the sperm production going. This episode is proudly brought to you by 38 Terra. Try 38 Terra's DMN prebiotic, the science-based daily multivitamin for your gut microbes, a simple and delicious way to take your gut health to the next level. Now back in stock in new and improved packaging for customers living in the United States, Australia, and New Zealand. Get 10% off your DMN at 38terra.com using the code THEPROOF. That's 38TERA.com and use the coupon code THEPROOF for 10% off. So those compounds essentially just mimic the signals that come from the brain right. to the, the testes. FSH and that H that would go to the testicle to tell them, right. stay awake, don't, 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 don't go to sleep. Okay, and is there any issues with doing that? We don't have long-term data on taking ACG for like five years or 10 years, number one. Number two, it's a very expensive medication. There's a big shortage on ACG that usually come from a compounding pharmacy. It's, it's very complicated to do that. So freezing sperm, if a patient would go on TRT is, is the best option. Second best option is take TRT and then take with it, along with it, some medication that would help keep the, the testicle alive. Third option is try to conceive before you go on TRT. Like if you don't want to freeze and you want to go through IVF or IOI, then try to conceive a baby and then start your TRT after that. Yeah. What would you say to the, the dude in his 20s that's listening and is either taking testosterone or thinking about it and just thinks, you know, I'll deal with this when I'm in my 30s? <laughs> Or 40s. I just want to say that they're not alone. Most patients on TRT don't know the side effects on fertility. This side effect is almost always happening. There, there is no way a patient or individual taking TRT, they're going to have some side effect on the fertility potential. It's up to them to educate themselves and take some actions. And company like Legacy are again providing a, a, a better alternative than them freezing sperm in clinics or labs because one is ch way cheaper than freezing it in a regular lab. Two, it's more accessible. They can get the, the, the kit, provide the sample, freeze it, and then do whatever they want. And they just need to, 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 have an, a, to make an informed decision about their TRT. Like they need to ask about the side effect of TRT, uh, whether fertility related or not fertility related, because Testosterone also affects uh, uh, the blood viscosity. It might predispose patient to having strokes or uh, deep vein thrombosis. Very, very minimal side effect, but they're there. So they need to stay away from organization or physician who are just trying to make more money out of them because it's, it's a big growing business of giving TRT. It's very easy for the practitioner or, or the, the clinic to just prescribe TRT, they have to, to, to do it in a, in a scientific way with someone who's following them up, talking to them about the side effect, and then doing every four to six month labs to make sure that they're safe, make sure that their prostate is not going, prostate specific antigen is not going up, to make sure that the levels are not shooting above 800 or 1000, and to make sure that the viscosity of their blood is still within normal. So my patients, I have to see them every four to six months in my office, as long as they're taking TRT. If, if they don't show up, I won't 
renew their prescriptions. Right. Yeah, I th- I think there's a lot of people that are just winging it. Right. <laughs> you know, flying blind, I know. thinking that uh, my body's 20, I'm resilient, yeah. this, will, this will be reversible. I'm not doing any long-term damage. It is reversible, not in, in every, every case. Mm-hmm. So around, again, 20% of men, they're just, we can't right. get sperm back. Right. I actually froze my sperm. Yeah, proud um, of you. Not only just just as an insurance policy, like you said, uh, okay. in case something happens. So okay. I think I think I have four vials. Good. Yeah. Uh, frozen. I mean, life is so unpredictable. Yeah. Like, and then when you freeze your sperm at a younger age, the the quality of the sperm is better. Like we have we had this big misconception of there is only an advanced age for female. Like we we call them advanced maternal age. But now we have a lot of studies and body of evidence showing that there's also something called an advanced paternal age, whereby there is a decline in the quality and the quantity of the sperm every year after the age of 40. So 40 is is the cutoff for men, 35 is for the female. So after the age of 40, we start telling patients that there is something called the advanced paternal age, whereby the the, the quality and the quantity is going to decline. But also studies are showing that the older you are as a dad, the higher the risk of having offsprings that are affected with autism or schizophrenia or depression or some genetic abnormalities. The risk is not substantially higher, but it is higher than the general population. I'm trying to, to, to scare you by saying that older dad will have offspring with problem. I'm just saying that the risk, if you compare it to the general population for autism, schizophrenia, bipolar disorders and some genetic abnormalities is a bit higher if the older you get. So the, the younger you freeze the sperm, if you want to use it for future conception, the better. Like you have a sperm in, in your 30s, it's going to be a better quality, healthier than a sample in your 50s or for late right. 40s. And perhaps if you're thinking about getting a vasectomy, but you're unsure whether you want kids in the future. 100%. This is why every single patient of mine before their vasectomies, I sit with them. It's like, dude, make sure we freeze a sample because you never know how things are changed. So the problem is when a patient's coming to do their vasectomies, in their mind, they're 100% sure. Like they're not going to have kids not now, not in the future. But things change. Like people would have divorce, people would have something bad happen to their kids, or they change their mind, or they want kids. Reversing it is a big ordeal. It's not covered by insurance. Reversing a vasectomy is super expensive. Sometimes it's not successful. Do you know what percentage of reversing a vasectomy is, is successful? So around 80% of, okay. of the time we reverse it and it's, it's pretty successful. High. It's pretty high. But the problem is success is, is, has different definition. If you're defining success as having sperm in the ejaculate, it's something. But sometimes you don't have enough sperm to fertilize the egg. So you still have to use IVF, right? So you're able to put the two back together and to get sperm, but the sperm would not be enough to fertilize naturally, right? So it's, 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 it's very complicated, the whole reversal process. Having a, a sperm sample frozen is way easier. The catch is you have to use the sample either for IVF, which is in vitro fertilization, or IUI, which is intrauterine insemination. It's 2025 and I have made the decision to join Function Health to help monitor and optimize my health. And honestly, after getting set up, I am wondering what took me so long. Function makes it extremely easy to track important biometric information over a lifetime. Information that you can use in real time to make important health decisions. Function gives you over 100 lab tests covering your entire body every year. Heart, hormones, liver, kidneys, thyroid, metabolic health, heavy metals, autoimmunity, nutrients, and more. Five times more testing than your typical physical for $499 a year. A lot cheaper than if you were to order all of these tests individually. That's if you can order them. Take ApoB and LP little a, for example, two very important tests for determining your risk of having a heart attack or stroke. Yet, as outlined in multiple episodes on this show by Dr. Thomas Dayspring, they can be incredibly difficult to order with your local doctor. Using Function is very straightforward. You join and then visit one of their 2000 US lab locations. I went to one here in LA where I live. It's very easy and boom, your results are tracked over time 
time in one secure place. No shady upselling, no gimmicks, just your results beautifully presented and science-based insights from doctors to help you optimize your health. Skip the 400,000 person wait list today at functionhealth.com forward slash Simon Hill and join me on the path to nerd level health optimization. That's functionhealth.com forward slash Simon Hill.